in the absence of we the people pressure, we the people monitoring and demanding, i.e. the Tea Party, I mean, the Tea Party is, is demonized because we the people demanded accountability from our elected employees. It can't get any sicker than that. But the real guilt rests on those Americans who do not call their senator, do not call their congressman, do not communicate with their mayor and their governor. The real guilt is the apathy and the sheep-like misbehavior of so many Americans that will fall for the hands up, don't shoot lie, and they may as well just say bend over, don't spank. It's all a lie, and it's a direct result of so many sheeple in America not giving a damn about using the freedoms that the military heroes have provided at such great cost and sacrifice so that we can earn our own way, we can keep what we earn, and we can inspire others to earn their own way by not enslaving them with handouts and the welfare boogie. So the, 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 right now, for example, you played Stranglehold. Stranglehold I wrote 41 years ago. It's celebrating our 40th year of my first solo album where everybody in the music business, Alex, told me, well, you know, Ted, the feedback guitar, that's like, that's uh, not cool anymore. And, and you'll need a keyboard and you'll need some pop song. You need to have a pop song. You need some background singers and you need more harmonies. And I, I said, I, I can't say on the Alex Jones radio show what I said, but it was a Detroit colloquialism that is a basic door slamming in your face. And I continued to make the music that the people that I played 350 nights a year in front of responded to enthusiastically. And when I travel today, it's not just a stranglehold musical statement. It's a stranglehold, I stand up for what I believe in. I still believe in the American dream. I still believe in the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Golden Rule, and the Ten Commandments. And it is alive and well across this country but because at least 55% of Americans don't give a damn, we've got a gang, we've got criminals running our government, our media, and our academia, and they do not reflect the positive, law-abiding spirit of good Americans everywhere. You come to my Facebook with 22.5 million people, you get the occasional freak. That's a good word that you choose. They are freaks. If you don't think venison is food, you're a freak. If you don't think Thanksgiving is celebrating the annual harvest of billions and billions of renewable wildlife resources, you're a freak. If you don't believe in the right to keep and bear arms and the instinct of self-defense, you're a freak. Absolutely. You should immediately move to Cuba where all your freak ideas are already policy. Ted Nugent. So, so this is not a Ted Hunch or an Alex Hunch. It's a we the people reality. And if you're not involved in this experiment in self-government, you're a punk. Something I've been saying for 20 years that I now want to basically amend is that I would always explain to people, look, the Second Amendment is about the right to keep and bear arms, defend us from a tyrannical government or from thugs or criminals. Everybody would obsess about hunting and our rights to hunting, but now I it get nothing it. nothing to do with hunting. Exactly. And, and of course, that's a, you know, something we say all the time is it's true. But I get why they're trying to restrict hunting, why they're trying to demonize it, why they banned it in most areas of Europe and the UK, is because that is a normal human culture and a normal human instinct and is very enlightening and empowering. And you get high from it because it's something you're meant to do. Like a dog gets excited when it chases a rabbit. We're meant to be hunters. It's, it's, it, it's a bonding experience for men and women. They're trying to kill our culture. So it is about hunting, even though the Second Amendment isn't. Hunting supports it and supports the Second Amendment. That's why we've got to defend it. But I well, look. You're absolutely correct. You can hear all the liberal anti gunners and anti freedom freaks. Every time they bring up gun rights, they always reference, well, um, if you have a gun that's uh, uh, proper for sporting purposes, um, we can see the ownership of sporting purpose firearms. But wait a minute. As if our founding fathers were worried about sport after they left the tyranny of King George. Well, they had the war over not turning the guns in. I mean, uh, the war was over them coming for the guns. That's my next question. Sure. Obama says he's going to use executive action to come after the guns. They're already doing it all over the country under the table. 
going after Social Security recipients' guns. I mean, that's mainstream news. We broke that. People didn't believe it until Fox News added a week later. Uh, they may push too far. They clearly want to start a civil war. How do we walk that line to not let them push us into violence, but at the same time stand up for our rights? How far do you think they may go? Well, they'll go as far as we allow them. And once again, that brings my main point of the apathy. Right now, i got to tell you, Alex, I hear a lot of squawking um, from petty individuals. Now, I'm not a member of the NRA because they didn't call me back. I'm not a member of the NRA because they didn't, uh, they didn't help my uncle when he got caught drunk with a shotgun. You know, if you're not a member of the National Rifle Association, Barack Obama loves you. And if you're not a member of the National Rifle Association, you have no voice in the battle for freedom, because when it gets right down to it, it is the NRA and the members of the NRA who stopped the attempt to ban 223, 5.56 ammo, when, it, when, they, when Barack Obama was doing double back flips trying to ban the most powerful, the, mo the most um, popular round, it's not powerful at all, the most popular round in, in America, and it was the NRA members that went, no way. Punk, and we stopped him. So they, the anti-gunners, would turn us into Cuba tonight if they could. And they've already done it in Massachusetts, Maryland, Connecticut, Delaware, New Jersey, New York. It's just criminal. The flagrant infringement. That's a constitutional violation in all those states I just mentioned, where you can't keep or bear jack squat. And that's because not enough citizens in those states stood up to the ty ty tyrannical outrage of Cuomo and even Chris Christie and certainly the, the governors before them. But those five states, Massachusetts, Maryland, Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey, uh, they don't have Second Amendments. Well, I mean, look at the governor of New York saying, if you're pro-gun, get out of the state. If you're pro-life, get out of the state. These are fundamentally gangster thugs who all have bodyguards but want us to be disarmed. And I've got to be honest with you, Ted. They're moving quicker, and I've been the alarmist all these years, than even I thought they would. They seem so arrogant, so aggressive. And I just hope people realize the L.A. Times announced yesterday they're going to close half the roads and make them for driverless cars. And they admitted in the article, to make traffic worse, and they use the Cloward and Piven term to nudge you into getting out of your car, and they admit to make you use their mass transit. I mean, these people are the most sickening control freaks, and that's the problem with Americana, John Wayne, mom and apple pie type people, is we're too proud and we're too cool to get aggressive, we don't want power, we got our own lives, we want to be left alone, we don't get in our neighbor's business, uh, we try to stay out of the way of control freaks. It's time to get aggressive like you've done in these people's faces. They're not going away. We've got to stop complying. There's an article out of Pittsburgh where it was a barbershop, 40-year-old barbershop. They send a feminist in to say, cut my hair, do my curls. They said, ma'am, we don't do that. We, we only, you know, trim short hair. She went, had the city fine them for discrimination. It's not discrimination. Uh, you know, it's like saying if a woman came in and said, give me a vasectomy at a doctor's office. And they said, well, ma'am, we only do that on people that have, you know, testicles. I mean, I hate to talk like that. Uh, the guest earlier made the point, it'd be like if you had a Chevy and brought it and told a Ford shop, you know, to put Ford parts on it. Sorry, we don't do Chevy parts. I mean, the, they've banned brown bags in Seattle saying they're racist. I mean, these people yes. want to control reality. They are a group of, of cult leaders. I'm Alex, sorry I'm ranting. The, the examples you bring up, I, 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 I could just gag laughing, except it's so cruel. It's so real. And let's, let's just jettison now to the forefront of freedom. I moved to Texas 13 years ago because Michigan turned into a suburb of Chicago. Ugh. The laws up there, I can't even have an uncased firearm in my truck on my farm. I'm not allowed in Michigan to have an uncased bow. My bow and arrow has to be completely enclosed in a case when it's on my four-wheeler or in my truck anywhere in Michigan, Alex. And I could go on and on while all my friends across America are hunting doves on Labor Day. In Michigan, they're flying all over the place. 
Michigan produces more doves than all the quail, pheasant, woodcock, and grouse combined. You can hunt all of the spore species, but morning doves are against the law to hunt in Michigan. I felt like I had landed in Cuba, but let's jump right to the last best place, Texas. I have undying reverence for the great heroes of law enforcement, especially in our fishing game here in Texas Parks and Wildlife. What a great bunch of men and women. What a great job we've done in Texas managing our wildlife to be the healthiest, most flourishing wildlife ever. Yet, in Texas, the Texas Parks and Wildlife are going to a private ranch in Texas that has a breeder whitetail operation and with a bunch of armed law enforcement members, they are going to pull another Waco, another Ruby Ridge, and they are going to force the slaughter of a private herd of whitetails, not in Massachusetts, not in Illinois, not in Michigan, in Texas, Alex, under the guise of the CWD, chronic wasting disease scam. And they came in and they forced the owners of the ranch out of their own home and off the property. They, they forced all the employees off the property. And at gunpoint, the way I understand it, at gunpoint, Texas Parks and Wildlife is threatening to slaughter a private herd of white-tailed deer. They've already forced a bunch of other ones to slaughter their own property, Alex. And, and then when they did the test, none of the deer had the disease. Exactly. Let's expand on that. There is a move for urban hunting with bows because in Travis County, they'll spend thousands of dollars per deer to load them up when they're overpopulated uh, in cages and fly them out to in West Texas, Texas. To, to die. Why not bring in urban hunting and use this resource? Like they do in about 40 other states because it's already been proven. I'm going to tell you, I love Texas, but we ain't perfect yet. So I'm giving a call to the great Governor Abbott, Mr. Greg Abbott. I'm giving a call out to my elected employees in Texas. Stop the Texas Parks and Wildlife chronic wasting disease scam. It is a scam because somebody on the, the Wildlife Commission doesn't like deer breeders. I've got the proof. And if we, the people in Texas, allow another Waco, a, a deer version of Waco, where it, even citizens, Alex, are being threatened if they interfere with the government coming in and slaughtering private wildlife. It sets a very dangerous precedent. They want a monopoly uh, over these resources. And meanwhile, there's just deer all over the place in cities with no predators overpopulated, stumbling around starving to death. Bow hunting should be brought in immediately. We'll be back. Final segment with Ted Nugent. We brought the fourth hour back, co-hosted by myself, a lot of times by my uh, other anchors and hosts here at the InfoWars News Center. That fourth hour is coming up. If your station would like to pick it up, certainly direct them to it. Infowars.com, of course, is the news website. Final segment with the Motor City Madman uh, of Liberty, hair on fire, Ted Nugent. And in the five minutes we've got left, I'll tell you, you got to hear the behind-the-scenes conversations. You were getting into getting tough uh, and what the candidates need to do and some of the articles you've got coming out. So, Ted Nugent, tell us about that. Repeat what you said to me off air. Well, everybody paying attention. There's there's a bunch out there. I travel all over the country, Alex. In every restaurant, every airport, every hunting camp. I mean, I just got another letter, and I get hundreds a year from an entire group of U.S. military commandos over in Afghanistan that are doing a bunch of you know they're 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 putting their lives on the line every day. And I put their letter on my Facebook, and it represents the pulse of America, especially those that are at the top of our species, the warriors, the guys in the, on the front lines of the war on terror, thanking me for using the freedoms that their buddies died to provide. So they, they, they support me because I am radical. An experiment in self-government is radical. To dare call us we the people is radical. To demand that we have the right to keep and bear arms, that's radical in a world of tyranny and dictators and tyrants and EDMNs and punks all around the globe. Kim Jong Un. Of course, we're radical. What the founding fathers did was radical. Rosa Parks was radical. 
If you're not radical, you're a sheep. And what I'm finding is that more and more people are being 